Welcome to starting lineup for week 21, the week where you get your second wild card with Andrew Wiebe. I'm Jason Seguini. We're going to get right into it. The first question came in from Justin about that second wild card. Which of these five weeks, Andrew, is the week that you should be using your wild card? Well, if you remember, we advised previously to use it before round 25. The logic being there should be a lot of transfers coming in. There should be a lot of players that you want to have on your fantasy team. But since then, I've come around a little bit. You look at round 22, a double week for Colorado, Toronto, and New England. I think before that is the time to use it. Set yourself up for that week. Make sure you have a bit big week. And then the other thing to think about, it's all single buys till round 34. You should be able to get by with those two transfers a week and still pick up any guys that come in. So I would say before round 22 is your time. All right. Some of us have already prepared for next week's double weeks and have compiled Colorado players, New England players, and maybe even a Toronto player. More on that later. If that's the case for you, I say you stick it out and you hold it until that last possible week. The reason being, players are coming in. You're getting new players playing for teams that could really show themselves. Eric Torres and Chivas. Chivas right now is a little bit of a mystery, but they've been playing better recently. Is he a guy you can get? He's going to be cheap. If he's scoring goals by that time, you want to have your wild card available to make those changes. So I'm going to say... I'm going to advise you to hold on to it as long as possible, as long as you can get away with yeah, it. Yeah, coulda, woulda, shoulda would be my uh, response to that one. Eric Walcott asked the next question, and I believe Eric Walcott is the only player left in the game who has not used his first wild card. He says, when should I be saving that to? There are World Cup qualifiers in September. Is that the time that I should use it? Yeah, that's probably a good bet, but I think if you look at 27 and 29, those two rounds are when you want to use it. Probably before 27, you've got a lot of double bye weeks in there. You mentioned Chivas. Eric Torres could be playing and two weeks in three of double games. He could be a good option there. You've also got Portland, Seattle, RSL, teams like that that will also go double. That's when I would do it. And also remember, look, at the beginning of the playoffs, you're going to get a wild card then too. So don't save it too long. Make sure you get into that field. Make sure you have the team that you want and make sure you have a chance at the end of the year. All right, Charlie Ray asked the next question. He says, I need one starter this week, regardless of price. Tell me who the guy is that I need to have on my team. Well, that's an easy one for me. It's Robbie Keane. A lot of you out there are probably not happy with the means with which Robbie Keane used to get those two goals against the crew. But oh, oh only if he wasn't on your team. Yeah, He's on your fantasy yeah that's team, probably you're right. taking those points. But hey, look. Any means necessary in fantasy, baby. you got to get the points, and Robbie Keane is doing it. I would go with him. They're away to Portland, but still, no Pablo Moduka. He is suspended. No Will Johnson. I think that their home streak probably ends, and it's probably at the hands of Robbie Keane. Next question coming in from Kevin, and he says, who are some guys that aren't owned by a lot of people that I could pick up to really make a difference in my league? And I love this question because he's really thinking about it. Everybody has Graham Zuzi, Moby Akugo, Mike McGee. Those guys aren't necessarily going to make you any different. Mm -hmm. That's status quo. So you got to pick players up, and you really have to think about who you're captaining if you want to make up ground. Yeah, it's all about risk here. You may not always be rewarded, but that's your only chance to pick up ground, as you said, if you're back in your league. A couple forwards to look at. Connor Casey, owned by just more than 2% of owners in MLS Fantasy. No Jack McInerney. He is the man in Philly. They're playing Chivas this weekend. Sure to have a lot of chances in that one. Cyrus in another one. He's been in and out with injury. He's been inconsistent, but you know every time he's on the field, he's got a chance at goal and only one point something, I can't remember it now, own him. Either way, that's a good bet. And then a couple other guys to look at. Warren Craval at four and a half million. He's been scoring lately. He's a good chance for you as well. And nobody else has him at 0.5%. And then Andres Romero, he is hit or miss up there in Montreal. But when he hits, he really does. So that could be a points bonanza, Bobby. All right, the, uh, the other guys that I'm looking at, speaking of Bobby, Bobby <laughs> Convy is one of them. Jeremy Brocky is the other. If you get the timing right, and Toronto has two games next week, these guys might be able to help you. I like Convy's ability to pump the ball into the middle. Brocky's a guy who can get on the end of it. They're getting um, Earnshaw back and healthy on the field. Cooverman's maybe not going to play this week, but could be back in the lineup soon. So I think there's something to be said there about Toronto. Playing two, two games, including one against mm -hmm. Chivas, there could be some points there, and they're probably probably guys that aren't owned by a ton of other people. Moving on, we have the Goot Man asking a question. I love when people yeah, tweet in man. questions. There's no name attached. Yeah. Goot Man works for me. Preparing for next week's double game, any Toronto FC players worth picking up? 
I would note here, Gutman, see the last answer. Yeah, well, I would say you spoke about Earnshaw and Covermans. Those two probably not your best bets. You mentioned they've been in and out with injuries, probably not going to play two games in one week. If you're looking on the defensive side, Darren O'Day would be a decent choice at 4.9. He's been getting into scoring areas, playing it outside back. The midfield, though, apart from Bobby Conby, and I still think that's a huge risk, that's an absolute dead zone. I wouldn't touch that one with a 10-foot pole. All right, Richard asked the next question. He says, after the trade of Luis Silva to D.C. United, is he worth the pickup? No, I don't think so at this time. you got to give him time to settle in in D.C., see what his role is. At $7.1 million, he's a little bit overpriced, too, unless he immediately starts producing. Give it a week or two, wait and see, see if the price drops. Maybe it'll rise if people, uh, you know go above their means, but I think now is not the time for Luis Silva. All right, I, I do agree with you on the wait and see approach here with Silva. The interesting thing that I remember hearing was when they made the trade, Ryan Nelson said DC United wants to build their team around him. And I really like you know, when you thought of that, that I was idea. like, he is going to go in the lineup and they are going to try to play the ball through him. He's going to get a lot of the ball. Yeah, but you're building it around a team that scored eight goals in 19 games. So don't bet the house on Luis Silva just yet. So I stand by and say wait and see. But if you wanted to take a risk, kind of like we talked about earlier, and a guy that not a lot of people have, maybe you could take a risk on Luis Silva. Final question coming in from Kenna Owens, and she says, I have Javier Morales. Do I keep him or do I pick up Graham Zuzi this week? And that brings us to a transfer matchup. Yeah. All right, Javier Morales at $9.1 million at Dallas or Graham Zuzi at $10.3 million home against Toronto, Andrew. Well, I'll spare you the Captain Fantasy reference, but Graham Zuzi would be my choice in this one. You saw Toronto FC's defense really struggle against Montreal in their last go-round. They're going to make mistakes. We've seen that time and time again. At home, sporting Kansas City, a completely different thing. I think Graham Zussi, some owners disappointed with him. They think, hey, where is that production from the beginning of the year? It hasn't been there for the past few months. That is a granted, but I think he's been busy. He's been with the U.S. national team. He's back with Kansas City. He scored last week. Might have been accidentally hit the post the week before. I think you're going to start to see him produce at a good level. Yeah, the other thing I'll say here is Rouse Salt Lake has not had a lot of luck at Dallas despite Dallas's recent struggles. They've had a little bit more time off. They're a little bit more rested, and George John expected to be back in the lineup. So I agree with Andrew. Graham Zuzi is the way to go here. Hey, I'm done. That's all we have on the paper. That's all we have for starting lineup this week. Enjoy the games this weekend. We will be back on the starting lineup for more fantasy advice next Tuesday.